are back at Watkins Glen, and there is no precipitation on the windshield of Mark Martin's Valvoline Ford. The track is dry enough for high speed, and so finally we are about to go racing at the Budweiser at the Glen. It's been about a three and a half hour, or even more than that, really rain delay here as the Haviland crew waits on Davy Allison to take the green flag. Then he'll be coming in and getting the relief help from Dorsey Schrader. The field is now moving toward turn number 10, and this time around, they will be getting the green flag. 90 laps of action here, the Budweiser at the Glen. The pole center is Dale Earnhardt. Alongside is Kyle Petty, and the pace car's lights are out as the field heads toward turn number 11. The pace car will dodge off to the right. The field will pass under the starter stand and get the green flag for the Budweiser at the Glen NASCAR Winston Cup race. Here they come out of turn number 11. Doyle Ford waves the green flag and we are finally underway. There are still a few wet spots on the track, but it should be okay as they head for you, Benny. Here coming down, Dale Earnhardt has the jump. Kyle Petty jumps in behind him, and Ricky Rudd trying to get on the inside of Kyle. And meanwhile, there are about four abreast back there behind. Believe it or not, they made it through the corner, three abreast. Darrell Walter, Jeff Bodine, and Bobby Hillen. And guess what? Everybody made it through the corner. Okay. Well, it's a head up through the S's, Benny. They sort of single out and get in single file. That's the way they need to go through those high-speed turns. They'll earn hard leading Kyle Petty as they come off of turn four. On the long straightaway here, now start braking to go into the loop. And you see our cable cam working. First time that they've come through there under competition, this new loop at Watkins Glen. Everybody seems to be getting through okay, Bob. No problems so far. In fact, the last car comes through the loop now. Everybody got through. Boy, we saw some poor breast racing there for a while. By the way, that uh, smoke there is for some aerial bombs that have been set off. It's not fog. Bob, now, I said everybody got through the loop. They did. Tom Bodine got tired and spun as he started out of turn nine. He is sitting on the outside of the track. He has the car firing now. He should be able to get going. He, he does. Tom Bodine. So, sort of a rude awakening here in his debut in NASCAR Winston Cup racing. There you see the Diet Pepsi Ford underway. He'll stay in the lead lap. And Dale Earnhardt is leading for the first time since Dover seven races ago as he leads Kyle Petty and Ricky Rudd up through the S's once again. Going through turn two. This is turn three, the left-hander. Now you go back to the right. We see all the cars coming through turn three. There goes Rusty Wallace, the middle of Jim on it. Richard Petty, there goes Earnhardt up the straight away, and then he'll be there in just a minute. Yeah, they're there already. Doesn't take them long to get here. Now they start through the loop again. Kyle Petty now right in there with Dale Earnhardt. Maneuvering very well through that tricky turn. And that cable cam is working well, too, as it lets the car sweep by and heads at about 50 miles an hour in the other direction. Now heading down for turn number 10 once again, and Kyle Petty is right on the back bumper of Dale Earnhardt. That's Rudd third, Brett Bodine is fourth, Ernie Irvin fifth, then comes Jeff Bodine, Mark Martin, Wally Dollaback, Rusty Wallace, and Dale Jarrett. And here comes, uh, looks like uh, Alan Kowicki making a move. But everybody pretty much in single file formation. Now there is the Haviland Ford being driven by Davey Allison. It had to go to the rear of the field to start the race. When we get a yellow flag, Dorsey Schrader will come in as a relief driver for Davey. You know, Ernie Irving is in this spot as we watch Davey Allison trying to pass some one down the front straightaway, but Ernie Irving is already up to fifth spot from his tenth starting spot. And Davey, sure enough, he gets under Ed Perry, goes to him through the corner. Back to Earnhardt, up the back straightaway. And to head into the loop once again. Ernie Irving pulled out like if he wanted to make a pass coming into that turn. And indeed he did move around the Brett Bodine car. So Irving already up to fourth place. Ernie Irvin started this race in 10th position, but he indicated that he was not happy, in fact, did not particularly work on qualifying, rather worked on the race setup. He won at Sears Point earlier this year on the road course. He was the defending champion here. He won the Bush Grand National Race at this facility earlier this year. So Ernie Irvin certainly has to be rated as one of the favorites coming into this event. There's the cave camp located at track level at turn number 10. 
moment as the field flashes by. Now the battle is for second position there as Ricky Rudd closes right in on the back bumper of Kyle Petty. There's Mark Martin on the inside trying to get by some cars. There's the first four or five. He's underneath someone. Uh, who is that? Looks That's like Bill Elliott. Yep. He couldn't quite make the pass that time. And you can see those RPMs going up. 8,100. Speed going up 163, 4, 5, 165 miles an hour. As he backed off to go into the new loop here. Front four cars beginning to pull away just a little bit. So actually the speed that uh, Mark achieved on that lap is only about three miles an hour faster than uh, we had under absolutely ideal conditions. Obviously the track is in pretty good shape. Well, I would say it's pretty fast, Bob. The temperature is cool. It's still overcast here. And normally that is good fast conditions at most any racetrack. Did you see his teammate, Wally Dollar? Yeah. just blow by Mark Martin. He went into seventh place. Mark Martin is back to eighth, ninth. And we're riding with right now Rusty Wallace as we look out the back glass of his car back to Dale Jarrett. Now looking out the front of Rusty's car, this camera is positioned on the uh, on the other side of the rear view mirror. It gives us a great shot, unobstructed as a matter of fact. At the, a couple hours ago at the very top of the show, we saw a picture from inside Mark Marsh's car when Rusty Wallace went off down in turn one. Mark Martin in eighth position, Rusty Wallace in ninth. As they break once again, heading into the new inner loop. Bernhardt is all ready for it. We see those cars now coming into the loop and coming out at it. They've been asking that pretty well, Bob. Everybody has been getting through there, haven't seen any, any wild moves coming through there so far. Yep. Once again, down the second fastest part of the racetrack separating turns 9 and 10, now breaking and gearing down for turn number 10. Dale Earnhardt, the pole sitter, hangs on to the lead, about a one-and-a-half, two-car length advantage on Kyle Petty. And again, Dale Earnhardt looking to pick up an additional $30,400 in Unical bonus money. And he was a pole sitter and will win that if he can go on to take the race. Now Still. Wally Dallenbach Jr. looks like he's trying to make another move. He's on the inside of Let's see. Brett Bodine down in turn one has position. Brett's not going to have any choice. Also, Rusty Wallace back there it takes the position away from Mark Martin. We're inside Mark Martin's car now watching Rusty Wallace as he goes through turn two. We see some telemetry. Martin's already in third gear up the hill. 77, 7800. Now about now he'll dump the thing into high gears. He ends up the back straightaway and accelerates to 165, 67 miles per hour. He did get up to 166 that time, Benny. Earnhardt and Kyle Petty, Ricky Rudd, and the car number four of Ernie Irvin already through the loop. They pulled away from Bill Elliott, who is currently in the fifth position, as we see Wallace now trying to work on Brett Bodine. He tried to get on the inside coming off there, but couldn't quite do it. You can see how close he is on the Quaker State Four to Brett Bodine, just looking for a place to go. Now he looks to the inside. Now to the outside. Here's Rusty trying to make the move into turn number 10. He will pick up the spot from Brett Bodine. So Rusty Wallace is showing some muscle here in the early going as he picks up a spot in the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac. Now we look through the back glass of that car. Back on Brett Bodine and Mark Martin. Martin on the inside of Brett Bodine trying to take that spot away. Neil Jarrett back there in the interstate batteries. He's on the inside, and ooh, Brett almost lost the car as he was trying to make his line, and all of a sudden, Dale Jarrett was there in the way. He had to get on the brake so hard that three or four cars passed him. Besides uh, Dale Jarrett, we also saw Daryl Waltrip move up a spot. Here's the leaders once again in the inner loop. That's Earnhardt and Kyle Petty. Poor Kyle is staying right with Earnhardt, Bob, in every corner. He's just dogging him. R uh, Ricky Rudd is back about eight or ten car lengths, but the car number four of Ernie Irvin is right on Rudd. You can see that little distance there between the two foursomes. I mean, the two twosomes. First four cars separated themselves from the rest of the field. Earnhardt, Kyle Petty, Ricky Rudd, and Ernie Irvin. 
We're in Watkins Glen, New York for the Budweiser at the Glen, and we'll be right back. Gonna get him. No, he didn't. ESPN Speed World at the Bud Meister and the Glen NASCAR Winston Cup race. Delayed by several hours because of rain, we are now underway with Dale Earnhardt, the pole sitter, leading Kyle Petty, who started outside the front row. Ernie Irvin has taken a position away from Ricky Rudd and now runs third as they once again go through the interloop. And those four cars have tightened up a little bit. Ernie Irvin about ready to get up there and make some pressure, but I'll tell you, Earnhardt has had all the pressure he wants from Kyle Petty. Kyle Really showing a lot of savvy here. We haven't known him being that much of a road racer, but we heard him say that his crew chief, Robin Pemberton, came over from a team that has had success on road races with Mark Martin, and so he knew a lot about setting the car up. As a matter of fact, Kyle Petty's best finish on a road course was way back in 1987 at Riverside when Ooh. he finished in third, and oh, look at the action as Ernie Irvin has to get hard onto the brakes, but we've got some great action here as they head for one again. Here they come. Ernie's going to go on the inside of Kyle Petty, trying to take that spot away. He may have him. He does have him. Ernie Irvin is already up in the second spot. Now he sets his side on Dale Earnhardt. And there they go through turn two, up the hill. Got to him. Got to be impressed with Irvin's move so far. Started 10th, already up to second. I tell you, in practice yesterday morning, they didn't get their normal Saturday afternoon practice because of rain here. But in practice yesterday morning, he was absolutely flying in that car. They really had it dialed in, and that's obvious here today. Here they are now coming out of the loop into what is now turn nine. We'll see where Irvin tries to make a pass. He'll try him before too long, you can bet your bottom dollar. They open it up a little bit here on this straightaway. Ricky Rudd has dropped back to fourth position and now begins to trail Kyle Penny by a few car lengths. We'll see what happens as they come off of corner number 11 and on the main straightaway. That's where Ernie Irvin made his move last time going into turn number one and let's see what happens this lap. Kyle Petty's already trying to look on the inside of Ernie Irvin. Gets a good run. Are they three abreast? That's what it looks like on the camera. Something's got to give. Can Ernie get up there? Let's see. He's there. Two abreast. They go through the corner. They come off the corner. They make a little bit of contact. But meanwhile, Ernie has to fall behind Ernie. Wow, some really close action. They did make contact as they came off that corner, but Earnhardt held his line. Well, fellas, it looks like that maybe Earnhardt is holding Irvin up a little bit, and to me it looks like Bill Elliott and Wally Dolan back back there are beginning to gain a little bit on those two, on those four cars. Yeah, we see him in the picture there, Elliott and Wally Dolan back, both trailing but not by very much. There they are, they're locked in a two-car duel. Both of them are trying to catch up to the front four. Looks like that Elliott has a little bit of damage on the right side of his car, but nevertheless, he and Dolan back are setting his, their sights on the front four. Here comes Dolan back now, trying to take fifth from Bill Elliott. Can he outbreak him? Nope, not this time. Meanwhile, up front, it's still a great battle as Ernie Irvin tries everything to take that position and the lead away from Dale Earnhardt. He'll try it again under breaking at the end of the straightaway. One more time, they come in the corner side by side. Ernie, this time, he takes the spot away. Earnhardt falls in behind Ernie Irving, who has started 10th and has taken the lead in 10 laps. That's one car per lap. Ernie Irvin is the new leader at the Budweiser at the Glen, our second leader of the day. Dale Earnhardt took the lead at the drop of the green flag, and now it is Ernie Irvin up front. Now we'll see if he is doing something that the others might learn from. He ran and won that bush race here. And maybe he learned a little something that the others can uh, learn from. You can see the cars going through. Darrell Waltrip, Brett Bodine, Morgan Shepard, Alan Kowicki, Richard Petty, 
Terry Labonte and Ken Schrader concentrate on King Richard Petty, who is in his final race here at Watkins Glen. He's running back in 15th spot. Well, he started 18th, Bob, so he's moved up a few positions. So he's doing right well, I think. Richard Petty has won more road course races than anybody else in the field. He's taken the checkered flag six times at various road course events in his long career. Here's Kyle Petty taking second. He takes that spot away from Dale Earnhardt, gets him in, come in turn one, out breaks him, has the spot now. Kyle Petty can see if he can catch Ernie Irvin. Meanwhile, Ricky Rudd has closed up on the back bumper of Earnhardt. While Kyle Petty and Dale Earnhardt were fighting for that second spot, Ernie inched his way ahead just a little bit. Jerry's beginning to pull away. That car really working, running fast on these straightaways that he's on right now as he breaks now coming into the interlude. And you can see that Elliott and Wally Dallenbach has almost caught Ricky Rudd, so they're coming on. Remember Talladega when Davey Allison started sprinkling a few laps into the race? He was able to stop and get a relief driver. It started sprinkling in turn one just about a couple of seconds ago. So that might be the break that Davey Allison's looking for. Well, that's something we don't need is more rain. We've had enough of that today, and we had hoped that maybe we could go the rest of the afternoon without any more rain. But many reports of light sprinkles as once again we jump inside Mark Martin's car and watch the telemetry on the board. As he gets it down to about 79 miles an hour and turn number 11 before accelerating off of there and headed, heading down the main straightaway. He's coming straight towards me up to 141, 43 now, heavy on the brakes. He's going to downshift the first gear to get through this corner. He was in practice already first gear, and we can see just a couple of raindrops on the windshield. Yep, we sure can. We can see the raindrops on the windshield of Mark Martin's car. Not very hard, certainly nothing to uh, create a caution at this point, but we'll keep our eye on it. As Ernie Urban continues to lead, Kyle Petty second. And there is Mark Martin running in seventh. We see Ernie Urban coming up on Hutt Strickland. Hutt appeared to make a pit stop early in the race, or either had some trouble somewhere on the course, but he's about to go a lap down. He made a pit stop there. He changed right side tires on the green flag. John Kern, what did, he, what did he change? Well, Benny, they didn't change tires. What happened was the transmission got stuck in fourth gear, so they had to jack the car up, put it on jack stands, go underneath, and physically shape the linkage to get it unstuck out of fourth gear, and he should be running okay. And Benny, you're talking about raindrops down in turn one. I'm a little bit up from you on pit road. We're feeling some intermittent drops right now. Wally Dallenbach Jr. pulls down to the inside here on the main straightaway to try to pick up another spot. There's our leader, Ernie Irvin. He has put a lap on Hutt Strickland. That 12 car is now a lap down. Kyle Petty is the second place car and Dorsey yep. Schrader is uh, standing along pit road saying, come on, rain. I need a yellow so I can get in that car and relieve Davey Allison. Not many times you'll see smiles on crew members' faces when it's starting when to it rain. It starts to rain, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> so Irvin is your leader, and Kyle Petty runs in second position. The top five, Earnhardt, Rudd, and Elliott, as we have completed 13 of the 90 laps at Watkins Glen, New York. Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, Dr. Jerry Punch back at Watkins Glen International for the Budweiser with the Glen NASCAR Winston Cup race that Ernie Irvin leads at the moment over Kyle Petty, Dale Earnhardt, and Ricky Rudd. Ernie's got himself a little bit of a lead, Ned, as he come up towards you. 
Yeah, that car really working well, Benny. Although Kyle is handling that pretty tight. There was a little bit more of a difference. And here is a side-by-side -side battle with Wally Dolan back and Bill Elliott. Ooh, and they touch. They touch again. Elliott hit the inside curvy, but Wally back, back does make the pass. But, boy, that could have been serious. It was pretty serious, man. I tell you what, I saw some air on that 11 car. No kidding, boy. Wally and Bill have been banging on each other for a couple of laps, but nothing that serious. Man, oh, man. Look what happened as they came into the interlude, Ned. Dollarback got on the inside, but he hit the inside Kirby. Then he got it straight down, then Elliott touched him just a little bit, got it sideways, and then when he corrected, he came back down into Elliott. Elliott backed off and said, hey, I don't need more of this. I'm in the battle for the championship. But you know what? Dollarback picked up the spot. He's now in fifth, and uh, Bill Elliott back to sixth position as Bill Elliott now tries to go inside of Bill Elliott. Mark Martin gets on the inside, and they go through the corner side by side. They touch as they come off the corner. Meanwhile, Mark still trying to get the position, and Bill Elliott now on the inside will hold on, and Rusty Wallace, he's back behind those two guys. That body and said, let me through, you guys. Well, we get jump inside Mark Martin's car. We'll see what he does now as they go on to the back stretch. He'll pull to the inside of Elliott and try to steal the position just like Dolan back did last lap. Let's see if he can. Exactly the same oh, thing. Nope. He couldn't do it. One thing that they have to be awfully careful of, and Dolan back did get his right front wheel on that curbing coming in there, and they say that you can do damage to a car if you hit that curbing too hard. But Dolan back is pulled away, so apparently he did not do too much damage to I thought maybe Elliott damaged his car, but I don't believe so. That's what I was concerned about when Elliott ran over that curve, that he might have hit something on underneath the car, the steering linkage or something, but it looks like the car is still okay. There is Ernie Irvin. Second spot, here comes Kyle Petty, then Earnhardt, then Rudd. Here comes Wally Dollenbach passing some of the slower cars as they come down into turn number one. That's Bob Shack in the 27 car, the white 27, sponsored by Max Race Cards. And Dollenbach goes to the inside of him. He just went by Greg Sachs and the young Lake Chevrolet. And <laughs> Dollenbach has put some distance on Elliott in a hurry. Yeah, evidently Bill is holding him up a little bit because he has taken off and he thinks it's time to go. And this is one. There's Hutch Strickland in the pits once again, apparently still having a transmission problem. Boy, that's too bad for Hutch. He'll be running forward next week in the mission. And he is announced, as we documented early this afternoon, how he will not be back with the Bobby Allison team next year. Here's Mark Martin, and now he finally passes Elliott. And they went three abreast in there. Greg Sachs, one of the left cars, was right in there, but he moved high and let him get on out of the way. But Mark Martin does take the position from Bill Elliott. And now Rusty Wallace is going to try to pass Bill Elliott. Elliott might have done a little damage when he hit that curvy, fellas. That car might not be steering quite as well as it was. I think you're right. Looks a little loose, doesn't he? Do you, Benny? He does look a little bit loose. Meanwhile, Rusty tries to get on the inside. Tries to come off that corner and get a jump, but Elliott gets a jump. Let's see if Rusty can get on down the straightaway. Kyle Petty has come in for a pit stop. John. Bob, we're only 17 laps in, but remember, they ran about 10 to 12 pace laps, so they're not really sure about fuel. They should have been able to go about 25 laps under green. Kyle pulls in a little bit hot. Now, you notice, normally on the pit stop, they will go to the outside and change tires first. This is a procedure they've been working on all weekend long, where they would change the inside first, then they will go around to the outside. What that allows them to do is get that first can of gasoline in very, very fast. Now, they're making sure that Robin Pemberton that the lug nuts are tied on the right side. Now they're working on the left side of the car. Kyle Pettig is down in the way. 24 even. And we also saw how it's still just a little bit slick on pit road, at least for people as opposed to race cars, as the Jackman slipped just a little. And look at the lead that Ernie Irvin has. And a car into the fence is Todd Bodine slamming into the tire barrier. Boy, what a break this could be from Kyle Petty if the caution flag should come out because he is going to be able to lead the, be leading the race when the rest of the cars go in the pits. If, and the caution flag yes. is out. A break for Kyle Petty and Davey Allison. Davey Allison, this is what he has been wanting since the race started. An opportunity to come in under caution and get relief from Dorsey Schrader. Todd Bodine's excursion into the tire barrier at the interloop has created the situation that Dorsey Schrader has been waiting on. Of course, there's no 
Okay, I'm going to get to drive now. Here comes Davy Allison. He will not be able to come in the pits this time. Pit road will be closed. That's because the pace car has not picked up the field, but it will. And when the car comes in for the pit stop, we'll be right there for you to show Dorsey Schrader relieving at Davy Allison. No, 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 he'll be leading the race. That happened at the inner loop, didn't it, Ned? Bodine's loop? No, turn no, 10. No, was it 10? No, okay. yeah. Right by right right. the compound's where he hit. All right. The Budweiser at the Glen is under its first caution on lap number 19. Todd Bodine making contact with the tire barrier in turn number 10. That has created the yellow, which was a big break for Kyle Petty because he was just making a pit stop. And it also creates the situation that Davey Allison has been waiting on. There is Todd Bodine. He is out of the car, obviously okay, but with a badly damaged race car. Davey Allison will be coming in for relief. Jerry? And Bob, the discussion was whether they should stay out and possibly pick up the five bonus points for leading a lap. Take advantage of the caution flag in more ways than one, or come down pit road and change drive. They made a decision to come down pit road. It's basically wholesale pit stops as Dale Earnhardt, Ernie Irvin, Darrell Walter, and now Davey Allison makes his way down pit road. Remember, the speed is 35 miles per hour. You look, you look to be very slow, but because the pits are very narrow here, they want to make sure to maintain a safety margin. He's already unbuckled the seat belts. He pulls the car in. Crew now going to work. Right side tires, one can of fuel going in. Davy is trying to very carefully get the steering wheel off. He slides out down the driver's window. Davy is out. He comes around to this side of the car, and Dorsey Schrader goes in. Have a crew member there. They have finished the right side tire change. Now they will jack up the left side of the car. Very, very smoothly things going on here in the Haviland pits. And what a break for Team Haviland here at Robert Gates Racing. Dorsey Schrader getting hooked up. He had a radio already hooked up to his helmet, so that didn't have to happen when he got in the car. Just a matter of getting the belts on. And remember, Dorsey Schrader, the same size as far as the seat configuration is concerned with Davey Allison. They make a slight chassis adjustment to tighten the car up a little bit. Dorsey getting hooked up. The window net going up. Meanwhile, the rest of the pit road has been cleaned out as it had a four-tire change. They are very, very happy here in the Haviland pits. Possibly a chance to salvage a Winston Cup win today, or certainly a lot of points, and maybe another shot at keeping that Winston Cup championship hopes alive. The car is refired. Dorsey Schrader getting everything hooked up. They confirm they can hear him on the radio. He is now talking back to the crew on the two-way radio. The window net is up, and he will be down and away here momentarily. So a tremendous break here in the pitch, gentlemen, for Davy Allison's crew, and now Dorsey Schrader aboard the car. And it is taking a considerable amount of time for Dorsey to get in the car and out of the pits. But remember, we are under caution, so he's going to be able to quickly catch up to the rear of the field. And when we go green, we will be watching Dorsey Schrader move up through the field. Davy Allison's race is done. Dorsey Schrader is now in the Haviland Ford. Jerry, Jerry. Yeah, Ben. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Benny. Why in the world didn't they stay out there and lead a lap? Well, they've thought about it, but... Uh, they're dead last now. It, it, nothing would have changed. I don't know. I'll ask Davey when we get a chance here. That was a discussion they were thinking about doing. Hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Okay. I, I'm not, I'm not understanding you. Yeah. Oh, okay, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Okay. I got a little bit crossed up. Okay. Nice. Uh, oh, For some up. reason, I thought that we were... Uh, Starting at the beginning. That's what I thought. I thought at 5.15 or whatever the IndyCar race is over, that you were starting at the beginning of the race. Oh, okay. Okay. Nothing to lose, might as well top it off. And they also want to adjust the belts a little bit. They weren't sure that the belts were exactly where they wanted to have them. He's yeah, trying looked, to get the belts readjusted inside the car. It looked apparently, like he was having a little trouble getting Apparently they've got the belt twisted. They're trying to get it untwisted now, but might as well bring it in, top it off. That's what it was, he had them crossed. Tracy doing a little agricultural racing. So what time are they coming to us uh, live? You know? By the way, can we tell people when this will be replayed so we, uh... Can you your VCR? Yep. Okay, thank you. What in the world happened to Ricky Rudd and Dale Jarrett on that pit stop? Oh, really? They're way back. Yeah, they probably were the two that, that actually came down pit road at 35 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, they might have changed all four tires, too. Back at Watkins Glen International, the green flag comes out from our first caution period on lap number 22. Now up front is Kyle Petty. Remember, he made a pit stop just as the yellow came out and therefore was able to get into the lead while everybody else had to come in for a pit stop. i tell you what, there's a lot of shenanigans going on down to turn one, but believe it or not, they all made it one more time. I don't know how many times these guys can go through your side by side and keep on making it, Ned. But look how quickly they get in single file as they hit up through the S's. Kyle Petty already now ready to start breaking, coming into the new loop here at the Watkins Glen International Raceway. With everybody coming in there, single file. It looks like they're all going to make it okay. Rusty Wallace back there trying to move around. Brett Bedine. That caution flag, a huge, huge break for Kyle Fader because he had made a pit stop just a lap before. He was able to stay on the racetrack and assume the lead. Although, he just didn't assume the lead. He's been running well all afternoon. It's a battle for eighth position as Rusty Wallace and Brett Bodine are wheel to wheel through corner number 10. Now in 11, Brett pulls slightly ahead. Let's see if Rusty will make a move as they come down the main straightaway. Battle for eighth position as we once again see Ernie Irvin flex his muscles and take second from Dale. He's on the inside of Earnhardt and takes that second spot away. He accelerates off turn one. Earnhardt tries to come back. And it sounds like we just lost Betty's mic. There is Alan Kowicki pulling to the inside of Presto 9 as the field comes through turn number one onto the straightaway between turns one and two. And there is Dorsey Schrader. 
who's now in the Haviland Ford, having relieved da uh, Davey Allison. He has run up on a couple of cars there, Bob, that were side to side for a moment. Ted Musgrave and the car number 12, Pat Strickland, so he just had to follow. Now he tries to move on the inside of Musgrave coming into the inner loop. You can bet he's going to take that car to its ultimate. Ooh, he gets a little bit loose. Musgrave gets, or oh, that's the uh, car number 65, not, not Ted Musgrave. Yeah, that's Jerry O'Neill. Yeah. Oh, the speech file there for a moment. And there is Davey Allison, who has a big smile on his face. They wouldn't be telling jokes if they just saw what I we saw. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the for truth. Sure. Now let's see what Dorsey can do with Jerry O'Neill and then turn number 10. This time he'll make the clean pass. Dorsey ran over the curb, and is Jerry O'Neill still in front of him? Yeah, I guess he is been having a time with him see what happens down there Here, he come down towards turn one he's gonna try one more time to outbreak him he does outbreak him and take the spot away well jerry punch is down in the hamilton ford pit with davy and davy you got a bit of a break there with the caution flag yeah we did jerry you know uh i would like to have stayed out there longer i was having a little bit of fun but uh you know it's for the best right now i need to take care of what, uh, what the problems we got with the arm and the wrist. And we'll be ready to go the full distance next week at Michigan. But, you know, Dorsey Schrader, he's got a whole lot more experience here at Watkins Glen than I do. And I don't have any trouble turning it over to him. Think about staying out, maybe picking up those five points for leading a lap. We thought about it, but we weren't sure how quick that caution was going to be. We didn't want to take any chances. So we just decided to come on in and get it over with. Maybe Allison now a spectator here hoping someone else can carry that car to victory lane. Bob? It's probably a good idea that they didn't stay out and pick up the five bonus points, but that's how championships are won. They get five points for leading a lap, and King Richard Petty is in trouble, spinning. That's in turn 11, just before the start-finish line. Just at the entrance to Pitt Road, as a matter of fact, but Richard has it going again and pulls back onto the racetrack. And Ernie Irvin has just about caught Kyle Petty, just a car length or so behind him and may try to outbreak him as they go up this back straightaway and head towards the inner loop. For the last lap or so, he's been about that distance, Benny. He moves in uh, as they come into the loop a little bit, but then Kyle is able to pull away when you get on the other parts of the rest track, so Kyle is hanging tough out there. Well, Richard just spun again up in turn one. He went down in the corner on the outside of Jerry O'Neill, blew down in the corner, and all of a sudden, I don't think there's any contact, but around he went. So Richard Petty having his troubles here, spinning twice in one lap. Now we see Ernie Irvin right on the back of that mellow yellow Pontiac as Earnhardt runs third, Martin fourth, and Jeff Bodine fifth. Ernie Irvin may be about to make a pass here on the main straightaway as they head into one. It looks like he's going to do it, Benny. Bob, I'll tell you what, he is so strong coming off that turn 11. He gets off that corner on the inside so good, takes the spot away. He's passed just about everyone he wants to on the inside going in turn one. That's probably the best place on the track to, to make a pass, Benny. I mean, apparently they, they adjust to set the car up, the gearing, and everything else to where he can do that. Well, there's Richard Petty spinning down in turn number 11, and we caught that from the camera mounted under the bridge. There was Dale Jarrett right behind Richard Petty, the interstate battery car, and Richard goes around. Uh, Sterling Marlin was right behind him and had to take evasive action. Well, here are the leaders in turn nine again. Ernie Irvin holding all to that lead now once he got around Kyle Petty. Be interesting to see if he can pull away as he did before the caution. There's Earnhardt in third, fourth, fifth, sixth is Shepard, seventh is Rusty Wallace, then comes Brett Bodine and Wally Dolan back, and Alan Kowicki and the others. Bob, you saw Ricky Rudd there. He's pretty far back. I don't know. He had a longer pit stop than a lot of others. He and Dale Jarrett both came out way back, and so did Darrell Waldrop. All three of those drivers uh, had longer pit stops. I don't know if they changed four tires and others just changed two or what might have been the case, but, but both, all three of those drivers lost a lot of time in, on that pit stop. We ride with four players there for a moment, Mark Martin. He tried to get on the inside of Earnhardt, tried to outbreak him going in turn one. That did not work. He had to fall in behind Earnhardt. Meanwhile, Jeff Bodine right behind Mark Martin in the motorcraft. 
That's looking pretty good. Now we're riding with Mark Martin, who is in fourth position. Just ahead is Dale Earnhardt as they move up through the S's and onto the back stretch once again. Now watch the speed go up to the high 160s. 165 before breaking that. That's pretty good after they've run this far in the race. The Bob was going to go a little bit higher than that early in the race, but he's uh, working on Dale Earnhardt, so he's getting all out of that 40 can right now. Long sweeping corner here in turn number nine. And there is Ernie Irvin, the leader of the Budweiser at the Glen, closely pursued by Kyle Petty. We've completed 26 of the 90 laps, and we'll be back right after this. Enjoyed the IndyCar race at Cleveland. We finally got this race underway as the skies have parted. Partially sunny skies now over most of the racetrack, and we are 29 laps into this 90 lap event. Budweiser at the Glen NASCAR Winston Cup race at Watkins Glen International. The leader of the event right now is Ernie Irvin. Second is Kyle Petty. Third, here comes. Dale Earnhardt, and in fourth position was the man you were just riding with, Mark Martin. There is Ernie Irvin. He has led this race twice. Now, the original leader was Dale Earnhardt. Ernie Irvin took over the lead from him after Kyle Petty did, and then we had a yellow caution period, and Dale, or rather, uh, Ernie Irvin moved back into the lead. And our first Grand Field summary for you as you look for your favorite driver to see where they ran last lap here at the Budweiser at the Glen. Ernie Irvin leading Kyle Petty at the moment. Ernie Irvin started 10th, and on the 10th lap took the lead. So, I'll tell you what, the guy has been just awesome this afternoon. That's turn 10. Ooh, he gets a little bit sideways there. This is turn 11. Now, he notice it. turns to the right and heads down towards the start finish line and down the front straightaway. Notice in 25th position is the 28 car, not driven by Davey Allison, but driven by Dorsey Schrader. We will document how that happened in just a moment as we continue to show you the Fram Field summary. 
Several cars are already down a lap. But Davey Allison has relinquished the spot in the Haviland Ford to Dorsey Schrader, and it happened during our first caution period. We continue to watch the live action on the racetrack. That is Ernie Irvin in the Kodak film Chevrolet, closely pursued by Kyle Petty. Here comes third and fourth as now Mark Martin begins to challenge Dale Earnhardt for that position as they head toward you, Ned. But I'm not sure he's going to be able to do it. He's going to have to outbreak him going into the loop here, but he couldn't do it. It's hard to outbreak Dale Earnhardt going into any turn. So Earnhardt holds on to that position. The front two cars have moved away from this third and fourth place battle here. But for the moment, Earnhardt holds on to third. Here comes Mark Martin on the inside trying to get on. Go down the back straightaway on the outside of Earnhardt, but that's going to put him in bad position going in this left-hander. That's not where you want to be. They're going to go through there side by side through turn 10. Now he will have the advantage going into the other corner, which is turn 11. And indeed, Mark Martin does pick up third position from Dale Earnhardt. That's doing it the hard way, I'll tell you that. Here they come, there's Jeff Bodine, and also on the inside is Rusty Wallace trying to take that spot away from Bodine. Meanwhile, Morgan Shepard is going to try to follow, follow Rusty through. Morgan Shepard had an awfully good pit stop. He was running back about 12th or 14th and came out running 6th after their pit stop. Here's 5th, 6th, and 7th, Rusty, Jeff, Morgan Shepard, then back to Alan Kowicki. And it looks like Rick Mast has spun and, in fact, possibly made contact with the wall. This is right at the entrance. In fact, it's blocking the entrance to Pitt Road off of corner number 11. It appears as if the Skull Classic car is moving. Yes, indeed it is. He'll pull back on the racetrack, and we will not have a caution period. And you're right. He did make some contact with the wall. Some pretty good damage to the front end of that Oldsmobile. That nose is crinkled up pretty good. And here it is from our camera mounted on the bridge at the start-finish line. Looks like he just lost it coming out of the corner. Kenny Schrader in front of him. He was trying to catch up with, keep up with that Kodiak Chevrolet, and he didn't quite make it. Michael Waltrip was close behind, but everybody, including Michael, was able to get away. And there you see the contact with the inside guardrail off of corner number 11 that caused the damage on the number one Skull Classic Oldsmobile. There's on the... Dick Trickle just went by, and Dick Trickle spun up here in turn one just a moment ago. Did about two 360s down in turn one, and kept it going. There is Dorsey Schrader, who is now behind the controls of the Haviland Ford. On lap number 18, we had a caution period when Todd Bodine had contact with the wall in turn 10. He's okay, but that set up the caution period that brought Davey in, and Jerry Punch was there to call the action. Pulls the car in, crew now going to work. Right side tire, one can of fuel going in. Davey is trying to very carefully get the steering wheel off. He slides out down the driver's window. Davey is out, he comes around this side of the car, and Dorsey Schrader goes in. And the crew member there, they have finished the right side tire change. Now they will jack up the left side of the car. Very, very smoothly things going on here in the Haviland pits. And what a break for Team Haviland here at Robert Gates Racing. Dorsey Schrader getting hooked up. He had a radio already hooked up to his helmet, so that didn't have to happen when he got in the car. Just a matter of getting the belts on. And remember, Dorsey Schrader the same size as far as the seat configuration is concerned with Davey Allison. They make a slight chassis adjustment to tighten the car up a little bit. Dorsey getting hooked up. The window net going up. Meanwhile, the rest of the pit road has been cleaned out as it had a four-tire change. They are very, very happy here in the Haviland pits. Possibly a chance to salvage a Winston Cup win today, or certainly a lot of points, and maybe another shot at keeping that Winston Cup championship hopes alive. The car is refired. Dorsey Schrader getting everything hooked up. They confirmed they can hear him on the radio. He is now talking back to the crew on the two-way radio. The window net is up, and he will be down and away here momentarily. So a tremendous break here in the pitch, gentlemen, for Davey Allison's crew, and now Dorsey Schrader aboard the car. And it is taking a considerable amount of time for Dorsey to get in the car and out of the pits. But remember, we are under caution, so he's going to be able to quickly catch up to the rear of the field. And when we go green, we will be watching Dorsey Schrader move up through the field. Davey Allison's race is done. Dorsey Schrader is now in the Haviland Ford. Well, that was a few laps ago. Dorsey, of course, did join the rear of the field in 32nd position at the moment, has moved up to 21st. So he is picking off cars rather steadily. Long ways to go. 
And these cars that he's been passing are not quite as good as the Earnhardt's and the Mark Martins and the Jeff Budines and Morgan Shepard. When he gets those guys, it's going to be tough sled. We saw a few minutes ago the uh, number one car, Rick Mass, spin and have contact with the wall. Let's go to the pits and a report on that from John Kernan. Well, Bob, Rick has shut the car off to the Skull Classic Oldsmobile. A uh, very disappointing thing to cir set a circumstance to happen to him. Nobody seems to know what exactly happened to Rick when he made the crash. Now, I Michael Walter, I understand, has crashed. Yeah, he's made contact with the tire barrier, has bounced off of it. Doesn't look like that he uh, damaged the car very badly. Appears to be trying to get it to go again. The Pennzoil Pontiac now begins to slowly move in reverse. Kyle, uh, Michael Waltrip indeed sliding off the course. Same spot that Todd Bodine got off the course up in turn 10. And meanwhile, I don't know, does he get all the way? Yep. Yep, he does get to the tire barrier with a back end pretty good. Yeah, he hit it pretty hard. Here's another angle as he got off the track and this slick grass sent him hard into the tire barrier. He hit it with the right rear of the race car. Yeah, that grass is wet, Bob, and it is very slick. Once you get onto that, you don't have a lot of traction and not a great deal of control. So he heads for pit road. We might also mention that Richard Petty spun a couple of times earlier on the same lap, as a matter of fact. He's been in for a couple of pit stops, but Richard Petty is still in competition, running in 31st position. There is the leader of the race, Ernie Irvin. Second place, Kyle Petty. And we get down to Jerry Punch, who's in the Michael Waltrip pit. The Pennzoil Pontiac crew beginning to work on the car of Michael Waltrip. Some damage to the rear of the machine. The rear pushed directly in. They will change all four tires. As Kyle Petty makes a move now, Ernie Irvin. And he gets past him in the loop, so Kyle Petty will make that move and take the position away. Meanwhile, back in the pits here, the Pennzoil crew now have changed left side and now right side tires and will begin to beat some of the sheet metal away. We are told that possibly Michael may have cut a tire, which caused the wheel hop and the spin up in the corner. But in any event, under the green flag, a costly pit stop here for the Pennzoil team. While they work on that car in the pit area, it is Kyle Petty who has taken command of the Budweiser at the Glen, passing Ernie Irvin in the new inner loop. Let's see if what happens here, if Ernie is able to repass Kyle in what has been the favorite passing spot on the track, and that is headed to turn number one. He's been awfully tough coming in here, but this time it doesn't look like he's going to be able to make it. He closes right up on the back bumper of Kyle Petty, but not able to get by. 35, make that 36 of 90 laps have been completed with Petty out front, followed by Urban, Martin, Earnhardt, and Wallace. How many laps is this race? 90, so we're nearing the halfway point. Okay. <laughs> at the Glen NASCAR Winston Cup race from Watkins Glen International Raceway. At the completion of 37 laps, it is Kyle Petty in car number 42 that is leading Ernie Irvin in car number four. They come up the back stretch off of a uh, uh, car going slowly back there that we saw briefly. Very cold. Very cold. in the water on the back straightaway. This could create a yellow if he can't get to a safe spot. This is the new interloop that we talked about very early this afternoon before our rain delays. The new part of Watkins Glen International Raceway. And really, Ned, uh, we discussed there is a uh, Derry Cope's car now stopped completely, and we watched the starter stand right in front of us to see if the yellow is going to uh, come out. John, what do you know? 
know about this? Fighting an engine problem, Bob. He was running on only seven cylinders, so initial reports are something gave up in the motor. A tough day for uh, Derek and Barry Dotson in that pure later crew. Caution flag is out, Bob. The race car is ready to move on the racetrack. Oil Ford is waiting for uh, Kyle Petty to come off the 11th corner. There it is, the caution flag for the second time today. And so they're going to have to retrieve Derry Coke's stalled car from the racetrack. Our second caution comes out on lap number 38. 90 laps will make up this NASCAR Winston Cup event. And we'll be back with more in a moment. No, we haven't yet. Seven laps, seven laps. That may uh, change some strategy, you think, here, guys? Yeah, what's it going to do? Yeah. But I think most of them will have to go in for fuel. Mm hmm. I don't, I don't believe they can Maybe take that chance. Time. I don't know. They could, though. But you, can, you can stop, make a pit stop here and not lose a lap, so. Mm -hmm. but, uh, don't stay out there. I wonder about, you know, the caution flag is, is caution flag's actually the entrance to the pit road, isn't it? Yes, it is. I don't know why Ernie and the guys just didn't go in the pit. Well, but maybe the pit was closed. Well, they got well, the, the caution wasn't out yet. The caution flag yet. Oh, 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 yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. is under caution for the second time this afternoon. This because of a stall car up by turn number three being driven by Derek Cope. Let's see what happens here in terms of pit stops. Here comes both, uh, well, most everybody, Jerry. Indeed, Bob, almost everyone down pit road. A good chance for the crews to be able to maybe take a good hard look at the tire wear since they have run awfully hard these past 20 laps. They pitted on lap 19 for the first caution flag, and here is Kyle Petty down pit road. Martin Martin, Rusty Wallace, Dale Earnhardt, and Ernie Irvin. We'll watch Dale Earnhardt and Ernie Irvin pit as they prove going to work on the Goodrich Chevrolet, our pole center for this afternoon. And we'll have right side and left side tire changes. Likewise, the Kodak film team right behind them working on Ernie Irvin's car. A lot of activity here in the pits. Let's check in on the Kyle Petty pits. John? We're in the middle of a four-tire change. Yeah, they are doing it just a little bit differently. They're changing the insides first, going out to the outside. It's a race here in the pits. They're already finished on the right sides. They're on the left sides. Kyle is down in the way. Great pit stop for the Bella Yellow crew as he beats everyone out. Mark Martin also coming down pit road. We understand that the 28 car, Dorsey Schrader, could not get into his pit, so he made another lap. It is tight here on pit road, and the speed limit is 35 on and off. As you can see, most everyone is coming off of pit road now, having made their pit stops. And this is the shot from Rusty Wallace's car, and look at the raindrops on the windshield. Once again. Oh boy, we're not quite halfway. Nope, we got uh, six more laps to go before we reach the halfway point. Now, watch pit road, and here comes Schrader in the 28 car. And either he doesn't see it, or he just says, I'm sorry, it's too congested, I'm gonna make another lap, but he didn't stop. So Schrader stays out there as the rest of the field has completed their pit stops. And Jerry, why, did, uh, why didn't Dorsey come in? Well, apparently Dorsey was said he could not see the, the sign on Pit Road, and so that was a miscue as far as being able to see, not accustomed to all the congestion when he runs a Trans Am or GTO race that you normally have in Winston Cup pit stops. But it could turn out to be a plus for him because 
They have told them just moments ago on the radio to stay out. They're discussing it right now, and because they are feeling some rain sprinkles here in the pits, they said stay out, stay out, stay out. We're going to try to make a decision here momentarily as to whether we want you to pit or not. But right now, we're going to leave this thing if we can. Well, he isn't at the front of the field. But I believe he's leading the race. Is he? I believe so. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, it's hard to tell who has who has been lapped and who has not been lapped. But Well, you're right. Most of the cars in front of him were probably lapped cars. So, yeah, our early indication is that Schrader is leading the race and therefore picks up five bonus points. And every one is very, very valuable at this point. Now it appears as if Dorsey will come into the pits. He comes off of corner number 11, and yes, indeed, he does drop to the inside and head toward his pit behind Richard Petty and the others. Jerry, he's headed toward you. Well, exactly, Bob. It was decision by committee down here in the Haviland pits. At first, they said we need to stay out and possibly pick up those bonus points, but the gamble was just too high. They decided to go ahead at the last minute. They said, we'll call you in. Go ahead and make our pit stop. Let's not roll the dice too early here. We may not get rain. It's looking a little brighter back over the east of us here. So the Haviland crew now working on Dorsey Schrader's car. We're under caution for the second time today here in the seventh annual Budweiser at the Glen. Back with more road course racing on ESPN after this. We'll have to make that point. Jerry did, but let's re-emphasize it. Yes, I got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sudden death. Yep. Walt Zimbriski. Okay. Yes. By the way, we'll talk about it later. We're back at Watkins Glen for the Budweiser at the Glen NASCAR Winston Cup race. Now, it's just about 5.30 Eastern time, and for those of you who tuned in to see the Senior PGA Digital Classic, the final round was rained out. There was a sudden death playoff between the two co-leaders at the end of the second round, Mike Hill and Walt Zimbriskie. You can see that following our NASCAR Winston Cup race, or if time doesn't permit, we'll of course have all the information for you on SportsCenter this evening. We have completed 40 laps, and we're gonna go at least one more lap before we go back to green flag racing. This caution was brought out when Derek Cope's car stalled up in turn number three. And we understand that, again, several positions around this 2.4-mile racetrack are reporting raindrops. And as we jump inside Mark Martin's Valvoline Ford, we can see that, indeed, there is moisture on the windshield. Greening where you are, Benny. Benny is down in turn number one. Uh, but apparently, uh, the mic isn't working. Maybe it's a water log. This has been an unusual day in terms of uh, precipitation and weather. Now, this is very important. Look at the Fram Field standings here as we're five laps away from the halfway point. And you know the rules if we complete halfway and NASCAR determines that you know, we uh, are in a rain situation and cannot finish the rest of the race, it will be called at this point. So these drivers that are running up front here may be in a very good position. Yeah, they could be, Bob. Uh, it's raining a little bit out here in my position right now. Not very hard, certainly not as hard as it did earlier today, but, but uh, it wouldn't have to rain much harder to 
keep a long caution and then hey we'd be in darkness before too long here. Yeah that's one consideration of course a NASCAR will have. Will we be able to complete the full distance uh, before darkness sets in. This is the in-car camera on Jimmy Hensley's machine. The 28 car, according to our NASCAR scoring, uh, driven by Dorsey Schrader, and of course, Davey Allison will pick up all the points, is currently in sixth position. Uh, Although he did pit, didn't he, Dave? Yeah, yeah he did pit, Bob, okay. so he's way back in the field yep. now, back at the... Uh, he was sixth before he entered the pits. Yeah. That, uh, that put him back. That's the new inner loop, and Ned, really, there hasn't been a whole lot of action there today. Not really. I talked to a number of the drivers after their practice and their qualifying here, and, and just what they thought might happen there. Several of them said, you're going to see more action there than you ever saw in turn five. But really, we haven't seen. We've seen some passes. We've seen a little bit of bumping between Bill Elliott and Wally Dolan back coming through there and a couple of other cars, but nothing major. We haven't even seen a spin out through there today, so I don't know if they're being extra careful or if they just adjust to do it that way. Well, only one car has had to drop out of this race as a result of crashing, and that was Todd Bodine. He came in contact with the tire barrier in turn 10 that resulted in our first caution, but Todd was quickly out of the car and okay. And the yellow is going to continue out here at Watkins Glen because of rain showers on the racetrack. We'll be right back. Hello, Jer. There's some confusion down here as to whether Davy Allison's car, the 28 car, led a lap. They have been told no, yeah. they did not led a lap. So we may be able to clarify that. You're right. I wanted to do that, and I forgot about it. Okay, you, you, you sort of implied that they didn't lead the lap, and well, I wanted I to emphasize they were, they were going to stay out and try, but yeah. they didn't stay out, so they, they really, in effect, never led a lap. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, you want Jerry to do that? Uh, that Davy didn't lead a lap. Okay. No. Okay. Mm hmm And and he he hasn't pitted, right? The eight car. Okay. Okay. He's eaten. About to go back to green. Yep, the lights are out. Okay. Okay. Approaching the halfway point here, the top five Dick Trickle, Kyle Petty, Morgan Shepard, Mark Martin, and Rusty Wallace. The question is Did Davey Allison's car, driven by Dorsey Strader, lead a lap? Jerry? Bob, the, the answer is no. They were going to keep the car out. They decided to go ahead and have him pit. So subsequently, by pitting and not staying out, he did not lead a lap. So they have not yet got those bonus points here in the Haviland pits. One guy who didn't pit and, yes, will lead a lap, John Turner is in his pit. John? Talking about Dick Trickle, of course, uh, they were hoping that they're looking at this cloud up here and they're thinking maybe rain and maybe they could stay out and lead it at the halfway point. But now that they're getting ready to go back to green, they're going to have to bring Trickle in. So it could turn out to be a very costly move for that racing team. And guys, I think they're uh, just about set to let them loose. Indeed they are. The lights atop the pace car are no longer flashing. And this will complete lap number 43, which means we will only be two more laps from the halfway point and the driver leading at that point, the winner of $10,000. Looks like the Kyle Petty is going to make quick work, possibly, of Dick Trickle and take the lead here before they get into the first turn. Yeah, Kyle's got the lead already. As they pass the Skull Classic Oldsmobile that was damaged earlier by Rick Mast. Three of rest through the first corner. That's Morgan Shepard in the middle. Here comes Kyle Petty storming into the lead. And Morgan Shepard has moved into second place. Another quick pit stop by the Wood Brothers got him out in better position. He was running seventh before that pit stop. There's Mark Martin going around Trickle and now Rusty Wallace going around as we ride with Mark Martin up through the S's, the high speed part of the racetrack. Now breaking to get into the new loop here. 
Rick Mass running pretty good there with that banged up car. He's a lap down, at least a lap down. Yeah, we show him uh, three laps down, actually, in 32nd position. And again, a little bit of moisture on some of the windshields. We were riding with Rusty Wallace there for just a moment. Here comes Mark Martin and Wallace, Irvin, Wally Dallenbach, Alan Kowicki. That's from about fourth on back. Bob, I think we'll see some aggressive driving because there are still a lot of clouds around and they want to make up every position they possibly can in case the rain does come. See Rusty Wallace step out there to try to get on the inside of Mark Martin, but it's not going to work this time. Mark Martin is running in third position. And next time around will be the halfway point. And it will be an official race should we get more precipitation than we're getting right now. Just a light sprinkle in some portions of the racetrack at the moment. Ernie Irvin, he's all over Rusty Wallace, and he's going to pick up that spot, Ned. Yes, he is. And there's right around him. He sees Kyle Petty up there, but he knows the Kyle is too far away for him to try to catch before they get that half play mark because Kyle Petty has moved away. Fourth, fifth, and sixth there. Ernie Irvin up ahead. Fifth is Rusty Wallace, and sixth is Wally Dollabeck. You smell the dark cloud that, that, that Mark passed under and a little bit of moisture falling from that cloud. There's Morgan Shepard second, then Mark Irvin, Wallace, Dollabeck, Kowicki, Terry Labonte. Here comes the leader off of corner number 11, and cross flags are displayed. The halfway point has been reached, and Kyle Petty picks up $10,000 from the Gillette Halfway Challenge. Kyle Petty is the name you must know if you are called by the Gillette Halfway Challenge people in the next few moments. Because he was the leader at the halfway point and picked up the 10 grand. Well, and Bob, it's raining down here in turn one. Where you been, Eaton? I went on lunch break, but I'm back now, and it's raining. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we're beginning to see a little bit of precipitation on the window of the broadcast booth also, which is directly across from the start finish line. So, we now have reached the halfway point, so now, as Ned indicated a few minutes ago, we may see some real aggressive driving here in the next few moments, unless the track gets real slick. Well, the caution is out in this corner up here, Bob. I don't know if there's yep, going to be full, overall. Caution, full of course caution. Apparently, it will be. They'll race hard back to that caution, Bob, because this might be their last chance. This could be the end of the race. You see the yellow flags being displayed by the corner workers, but it is waving also from the starter stand, indicating an overall caution. We're watching the battle for second place look at mark martin get right up on the, and here comes ernie Irvin, about to take third he does take third from mark martin now he's going to try to get second away from morgan shepherd kyle petty meanwhile is the leader of the race he comes off of corner number 11 and takes the caution flag Irvin trying desperately to get second and he does not morgan shepherd second right now ernie Irvin, then mark martin and wally dollenbach as the cars hammer down for turn one having taken the caution flag did mark martin have his hands full trying to get back by <laughs> ernie Irvin? boy oh boy what a great shot from inside his car so, and it quit raining bob I was just the latest medical i mean the latest weather, weather update. update it quit raining well i don't think it has here on the main straightaway it's still racing here's the replay now watch ernie He's on the outside of Morgan Shepard, not the way you want, not where you want to be. But now he needs to get back to the inside, which he does. Makes Mark Martin run over the curb. He said, okay, now I'll try to get Morgan. Says, I'm doing Mark. Hey, I'll tell you what, that's rain up there coming up behind these cars, isn't it? That's yeah. water. Yeah, it was very wet coming off of there, I'll tell you. They did a great job of driving so that we didn't see a big mess there. He really did do a nice job saving that car because he would have tagged the wall a little bit more. There's Kyle Petty leading. You watch the field go by. Now, this is really the same as a field summary, as you can see, where your favorite driver is. We lock down the camera here and watch the field go by. There's Dale Jarrett and Harry Gant. And Davey Austin's car driven by Dorsey Shredder way back there. About 20, I'd say that's about 23rd or somewhere in that neighborhood. Let's get out to John Kernan, who's with Robin Pemberton. Robin, a smoking pit stop on that uh, caution period back there, less than 21 seconds. You guys are doing it just a little bit differently than everyone else. Is that, uh, how did you come out with that idea? Uh, the guys in the shop, they, uh, they've they been doing some thinking. I let them do that every now and then. And they've come up with a few different ideas to try. It, uh, 
we did it in honor of the Olympics. You know, you got the Fosbury flop and all that stuff. You know, I mean, this is a little bit different twist for us. Seems to work pretty well. You know, this is, it's hard for crews to come here because you pit in a different way. And uh, it's hard to get acclimated to the situation with only doing two or three stops. So uh, we put a little twist in it. Obviously, it did very well. The car also working very well. Kyle has said that it's not his driving ability out there. It's the car that you put underneath him. But you told me that, well, the driver ability and car have a lot to do with it. Now, Kyle's pretty underrated, um, and he doesn't take any credit. Uh, he does an excellent job, and uh, he deserves a lot of the credit. We came up here and tested last week for a couple days, and uh, a lot, lot of driver. Motor deal's really good right now. John's done a great job with the engine, so uh, it's just a good thing, you know. As we're waiting for them to come back across to the start finish line under caution, we look up and see all these dark clouds. Past the halfway point, you all may have pulled something off. Well, we've had a cloud overhead most of the year, so maybe this is one that we're welcome, you know. Uh, if we could ever get lucky, this would be the time. We've had a lot of misfortunes this year. We've run real well, and uh, and the last eight or ten weeks have really turned around for us. Hopefully, this uh, this will turn out our way. Maybe, Bob, they've just found one of those dark clouds with a silver lining, possibly. Very, very possibly, because the track is very wet. And look, the tarps have also been brought out by the pit crews trying to keep the, their pit areas uh, dry. But the track is wet. Now, this is Mark. how it looked from Mark Martin's perspective as he and Ernie Irvin and Morgan Shepard battle for position. Watch him come off corner 11 and get way sideways. Oh, Landing that gas pedal, trying to keep that car straight and trying to beat Ernie Irving to the line all at the same time. Jerry Punch has a comment on Kyle Petty. I think what makes Kyle's achievement even more amazing today is you got to remember, guys, the first, only the second time in four years he's raced here. 89, he ran a limited schedule, did not run Watkins Glen. In 1990, he raced here. In 91, he was hurt, didn't come to Watkins Glen. So he hasn't been here in two years. And to do what he did this weekend, fall about on the front row and lead this race in the rather inclement conditions, I tell you, he's got my vote. In the last five races, Kyle has four top tens and has moved to 11th. Only 10 points out of the top 10 in NASCAR Winston Cup points. We are under caution, not because of an accident or debris on the racetrack, but Mother Nature has once again opened up and dropped a little bit of rain on Watkins Glen International. Back with more after this. Oh, what I wanted to say, Mikey and Neil, you can hear this too. On uh, on the Telestrator, you guys have had uh, various things, and it has been an incredible help to me. If we can do that every race, because basically I know what's coming up next. <laughs> huh? <laughs> That's right. This has been the best use we've had out of the Telestrator in years. Oh, all righty. Okay. Did I miss anything spectacular? Uh-uh. Okay. I asked you a question once and you just sat there like a bump on a log and didn't answer me. But other than that, it made you look stupid. But other than that... <laughs> 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 Mikey! <laughs> Mikey, Mikey. <laughs> Welcome back to Watkins Glen International, the Budweiser at the Glen NASCAR Winston Cup race, which is still under caution because of a wet racetrack. I don't think it's raining here on the main straightaway anymore, but there are portions of the track that are wet, including this area here off of corner number 11. You know, if Elmo Langley would turn the wipers off on the pace car, it would make me feel a whole lot better. I have a feeling it's still raining in portions of the track. That is Well, he probably don't need the wipers anyway. Yeah, that's true. Well, he needs them over in this portion of Does the track. Does he? Oh, excuse yes. me. Because it's, uh, it's raining not real hard, but, but there are raindrops falling over here. Boy, this has been some day, hasn't it? 
we came on the air at one o'clock today and about ten minutes before one it started to rain and the crowd stayed here and was very patient we got the cars on the track once just about started but it started to rain again we dried the track we've gotten the race started now and we have completed more than half the distance but it's raining again but still the fans are here despite the fact that they're in their rain slickers and carrying the umbrellas they're hanging right in there you know the worst part about it is all the rain hasn't even been a good shower and it really <laughs> hasn't rained that hard yep well let's take a look at our western auto race recap kyle petty has led 14 of the 46 laps we've had two cautions for a total of eight laps there are 26 cars on the lead lap four liters six lead changes in the average speed 93.87 miles an hour those that have led a lap include the pole sitter dale earnhardt kyle petty ernie Irvin, and dick trickle under caution those out of the race james hilton danny wilson Derek hope todd bodine crashing not injured and Michael Waldrop. The standings in the Western Auto Mechanic of the Year race. Tim Brewer from Bill Elliott's team is on top by three points over, over Tony Glover from Ernie Irvin's crew. Donnie Richardson is tied with Tony for second. In fourth is Larry McReynolds from the Haviland Ford Davy Allison team. And Steve Meal from Mark Martin's car number six is fifth in the Mechanic of the Year standings from Western Auto. King Richard Petty shown in 28th position one lap down he and the other drivers circulate around this track hoping it will dry and hoping we can get back to some more green flag racing but at the moment the track is wet and kyle petty is your leader Why don't we just end this drudgery? I like a race as much as anyone else, but the thrill is gone. Elliot, if it ends now, Elliot's gonna take the point lead mm -hmm. back. I got him in 14th place and Schrader in 20th place with Davies. That, that correct? is correct, Ned, yep. yep. So he would regain That's point something lead. we need probably to mention. What? Not that again. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well, that's that is a good point. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing, the Budweiser at the Glen from Watkins Glen, New York, live here on ESPN. Still raining in some portions of the racetrack, and you begin to wonder at this point when and if they will display the red flag because quite uh, damp in some sections of the race course. Let's go down to Jerry Punch, who's in uh, Ernie Irvin's pit. Guys have been a humor down here, you know, when they when they realized it was starting to rain and the, probably the caution was going to come out the next lap by, Tony Glover, who's the crew chief on Ernie Irvin, knew that Ernie would probably just get wild in that with that steering wheel, which is exactly what he did. He, but he told him, he said, hey, calm down, take it easy. There's 30 cars behind you in the lead lap. If you get off this race course, we'll finish 34th. I'd rather finish 4th than way back there. Well, Ernie was all over the racetrack, passing people right, right and left. And when they saw him come out of turn 11, he had passed and made a couple more passes. And Tony said, well, you see how well he listens to me. <laughs> Ernie Irvin third in the lineup as we remain under caution. Now, in terms of Winston Cup points, Ned looks to me like that Bill Elliott, if the race were to end the way the standings are right now, would take back the points lead. Isn't that the way you got to figure? Yes, he would, Bob. I could have him in 14th position at the moment, and Dorsey Schrader relieving for Davy Allison. I see him in 20th position, so he definitely would take over the point lead. Wouldn't be much of a separation, but again, Elliott will have a slight advantage coming out of this race if the race were to end right now and the standings would stay as they are right now. 
and yep. it's raining here on the main straightaway now. Yeah, yes. all the fans in this grandstand are heading for cover, so it must be raining down here. I'm uh, high and dry myself, but uh, must be raining. We had a hard shower. It's still raining here, but we had a hard shower while we were away on the commercial break. It has lightened up just a little bit, but it's still raining, and being in the fans over here are beginning to cut for shelter as well. All right, let's show you a field summary now from Fram showing you where they are at the moment so that if we do get a red flag in the next few laps, you will know where your driver finished. I think I was just mentioning this morning on the way to the racetrack how we have been very lucky at ESPN in terms of rainouts. The last rainout that we had, complete washout, was in Talladega a year ago last May, but this has been one of the longest races and days that I've spent in quite a few months or years <laughs> and actually it's one of the shortest races mileage yep. wise <laughs> that yep. we have and we were positioned to go on the air at what 12 o'clock one yeah and uh it's now almost six almost six so i've been sitting here six hours waiting on something to happen my plane leaves in 35 minutes so um benny you'd have to have nothing to complain about because you've been uh, eating and signing autographs and schmoozing with the fans haven't you well, yeah, but I mean, I mean, what's somebody to do? <laughs> I just can't sit here and uh, watch it rain forever. I got to get down with fans, and boy, they are leaving now. Yeah, I can see it raining really hard here on the main straightaway now. I just have a feeling that it isn't going to be long before there is a decision. Well, it's, it's gotten to the point now, Bob, and it's still raining. It's picked up again back here, raining pretty hard. It's gotten to the point now, as late as it is in the day, we aren't going to get any sunshine. And That's it took right. a long time to drive this track when we had a little bit of sunshine. But it, it would take a long, long time. I doubt if they could get this track dry before dark if it no. stopped raining right now. I don't think so, because it's taken an hour under ideal circumstances. And uh, because we're in the month of August, the sun is going to set before we could get this racetrack ride. So we wait patiently to see what is going to happen right now. The yellow flag is the one that is out, no red. So the race is not over at this point. We'll come back with more from Watkins Glen. The Budweiser at the Glen NASCAR Winston Cup race has been red flagged once again. The cars are being pulled into the pit area. No checkered flag, so the race isn't officially over yet, but it continues to rain rather hard here at Watkins Glen. Our Speed World coverage being brought to you by GMC Trucks, the strength of experience. By Pennzoil, America's number one selling motor oil for performance, protection, and quality. And by Goodyear. Number one in tires. There's the story. The field has come into the pit area and the cars have been stopped. The tarps are going on. 
and the race is once again under a red flag condition. 51 laps have been completed. John Kernan is with Kyle Petty. Got to be a, a tough way to, to spend a few minutes waiting for the rain. You're ha past the halfway, you're leading the race. Yeah, we were where we wanted to be, but it's just it's sprinkling. It's just not raining hard enough, but, uh, you know, it's getting late. And, you know, you take them any way you can get it, but we were running really good. Uh, you know, I think we had a good car. Ernie had a good car. I think Mark had a good car and was coming up through there. He just kept getting caught back in traffic. And it's just one of those deals where if we get to go racing again, at least I know who I'm going to have to be racing now. Before, when we waited on the rain, you never knew who you was going to have to race. Uh, Kyle, I'm getting a message now that uh, we're not going back green. Is that right, guys? No, I don't know about that. You know more about things like that. Than that. Okay, what we're, what we're hearing right now, Kyle, is that you're the winner of the race. Congratulations. I'd take it and go to the house, but I got to go from a higher authority than you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on now. Are you guys sandbagging me or what? Oh, you don't believe us, huh, oh. Kyle? <laughs> Wait well, a second. We have Watch the flag stand, Kyle. We have yeah, not. they got it. It's been confirmed, Kyle. Now, okay. now you got the higher authority. <laughs> I guess so, man. And I tell you, uh, you know, we run really good. But and and I owe it all to, to Robin Pemberton and John Wilson. Them guys. We had a great motor. If you could, if you saw it on TV and watched your car run up the back stretch, you saw how good it handled through the S's and how fast it was down the back stretch. All I had to do was keep it between the ditches the other times. So, you know, it was just we were lucky today. And uh, you know, I, I was praying the last. I prayed before the race started, but I prayed the last 10 or 15 laps that we'd make it to halfway and be leading, and uh, I think the good Lord answered our prayers today. Well, I hope you guys aren't sandbagging us because uh, Kyle's a pretty happy guy right now. No, I think, John, we can officially call that the Kodak Gold Film Winter Circle interview, although it kind of snuck up on us and you, but uh, while you were conducting your interview initially with them, they did make the decision that it should be in addition to the red flag, a checkered flag, indicating that the race is over ending just past the halfway point. We completed 51 laps of this event out of 90, and Kyle Petty is the winner of the Budweiser at the Glen. There were six uh, guys coming into this race who had not won in 92 that had in 91. Kyle was one of them. Our congratulations to Greg McConnell from Anaheim, California, who won a Chevrolet Lumina Z34 today in the Gillette Halfway Challenge. Now to enter next week's for the race at Michigan International, we must have your entry by next Saturday, and you must be 18 years of age or older to enter. Right to the Gillette Halfway Challenge, Post Office Box 2246, St. Petersburg, Florida, 33731, and you will be eligible for that Gillette Halfway Challenge next week at Michigan. Jerry punches with Ernie Irvin. And moments ago, Felix Sabatis came by to congratulate Ernie on that outstanding move. Ernie, you were, uh, it was raining, and yet you just kept coming. Well, you know, I was catching up. Morgan was holding up our... Don't know about over there, but it's raining pretty good over here yet. Nope. There was never a checkered flag displayed, and uh, Doyle Ford remains in the starter stand. All the course workers are walking in. Okay. Yeah, they're all packing up all over right. here. Okay, I'm wrong, as usual. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a good idea. We're here. We're here. We're here. I got it. Right. Come on back up.
The Budweiser at the Glen NASCAR Winston Cup race is over just past the halfway mark with Kyle Petty, the winner because of rain. Now coming up, the Senior PGA Digital Classic. We told you that the final round was rained out and there was a sudden death playoff between the co-leaders of the second round and you will be seeing it coming up shortly here on ESPN. Now we realize that you didn't see all of this race live. However, we will replay it. So set your video recorders to 3.30 Eastern time Wednesday morning and then Thursday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You can see this race in its entirety at either one of those times. Wednesday at 3.30 a.m. or Thursday at 1 p.m. Jerry Punch is with Ernie Irvin. And, and Bob, moments ago, Felix Sabatis, the car winner for Kyle Petty, came by to congratulate Ernie Irvin, and now Kyle Petty comes by to congratulate Ernie on an outstanding effort as they congratulate each other. And Ernie, you knew the rain was coming, the caution was coming out, and you made some unbelievable moves. Well, you know, um, it's really more accident than anything. Uh, Morgan Shepard only got right left side tires, and he was holding us up pretty bad. And Mark went flying in underneath them and or behind him, and I didn't know they were slowing up so fast. So I just it was a it was a evasive move more than anything. And uh, luckily, we didn't all wreck right then. But you know, uh, congratulations, to Kyle. You know, it's not given to him. It's one he did one heck of a job and uh, had a fast race car today. Ernie Irvin finishes in third spot. And the man who finished in second, got to be smiling. He's with John Kernan. Indeed, Morgan Shepard, a big smile, as big a smile as Morgan allows himself to have. Now, Morgan, you kind of snuck up on everybody. You say it was the pit work. Can you tell us about the pit stops? Well, I didn't really sneak up on them, you know. Uh, these Woods boys just made it easy for me. They got me in and out of the pits. You know, we've been being a little bit behind, behind this year in a couple of areas, and a couple of them was uh, chassis on the racetracks. I've been missing it some and been off a little bit in the pits. But I'm telling you, if I can get the chassis working the way these Woods boys was making the gains in the pits, they just made it easy for me today. And I'd like to say hi to Fran. Hope you're getting well, darling, and get back to see some races. Uh, see you, Larry. That's Morgan Shepard. And by the way, that last pit stop, not two tires. Morgan took on four tires. Robin Pemberton has been named the mechanic of the race from Western Auto. So congratulations to Robin. Kyle Petty, the winner here at Watkins Glen. Oh, Neil. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Points, all right. Okay, is this our last segment, Neil? All right. <laughs> Don't you just love it? Jack, Jack, I need to give you the cricket points. Are Benny and Ned still on? I am. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll do some jive in here while we watch the full field rundown. Okay, buddy. You still getting wet, Ned? Uh, it, it's still raining a little bit. NASCAR Budweiser at the Glen over. Called early because of rain. Here is the full field rundown. As you see that Kyle Petty was the winner, followed by Shepard, Irvin, Mark Martin, and Wally Dollenbach finishes in fifth position. While we watch the uh, full field rundown, we'll get the comments from uh, Ned and Benny. Benny, it was kind of a weird day, wasn't it? About the weirdest day I think I've ever seen in my life. I'll tell you what, it looked like it was not, it was going to rain the thing out, looked like it was going to be okay, and then all of a sudden here comes another cloud. It ends the day, but the guys did pretty good down in turn one. A lot of passing was done down here and not too many spin outs. And Ned, I think the same could be said about the real question mark that everybody had about this new racetrack, and that is the inner loop. I think it was a pleasant surprise, Bob, that, that we didn't see any more action than we did. No spin outs at all in the new loop, and uh, just a few, you know, fender bangers, nothing uh, very serious there. They adapted to it very, very well. So the inner loop passes with flying colors, although it was a uh, race that was called early because of rain. Delayed 
for a long time because of rain and finally called because of rain. There is the winner, Kyle Petty. Now, as far as points are concerned, Bill Elliott does indeed take back the Winston Cup points lead. He has a 17-point advantage on Davey Allison with Alan Kowicki in third, Harry Gant fourth, and Mark Martin in fifth position. Now, with this win, Kyle Petty does move into 10th position in the point standing. So as we head to Michigan International next Sunday, Bill Elliott will still will have the points lead once again from Davey Allison. Don't forget we have uh, the Digital Seniors Classic coming up and next Sunday afternoon, the Champion Spark Plug 400 from Michigan International Speedway where the defending champion is Dale Jarrett. My thanks to Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch for staying with us on a very long day that was finally concluded with Kyle Petty, the winner. This is Bob Jenkins. So long, everyone.